All right, while we are working on filling in the gaps of transitions between, I wanted to share with you this, this artist on Instagram that makes uh, ceramics that are composites from different found ceramics, right? So pretty much exactly what we do <laughs> for this creature design project except cutting them out of different kind of chotskis and then rough cutting or rough gluing them together. So he's going to put a cat head on there and then he's going to put the duck bill onto the cat. So pretty simple compositing, right? But then the real trick is how do you make it all seem like it's all one piece? And that's the stage we're at in our process now. So, so what they do is they use um, an animator's clay, a, a plastic based clay, like Sculpey, and they fill it in, and it's an air dry clay. And then they airbrush it to match the glaze. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna use clone stamp to kind of airbrush the, the awkward parts. And then little detail works until you get to the finished product. Same kind of thinking for this. So. I'm looking at this and there's like some weird spots, right? It's weird that the mushroom bit is there. I like it, but it's nowhere else in the creature. So what if I wanted to take some of that and use it to fill in a weird transition, which I would say is here on the cheek. A little bit of this texture up there might help this creature feel more believable. So what I'm going to do is take that mushroom and I can duplicate it. This would be the compositing way to do it, right? And then I can just rotate it and bring it in as part of the head, kind of as a, a little collar piece, right? And then I can warp it so it doesn't look quite so copy pasty. And I can overlap it with the texture under so this is a way of kind of filling in transitions with some of your other elements. But we still have that transition problem. So even if I kind of erase away with my soft eraser, start blending it in, there are some edges there on the head that don't quite work. And there are some, I can take down some of the edges here, let that transparency come through. So how can we do what that ceramicist does with the the animator's clay to fill in gaps. We can use something called clone stamp. But for clone stamp to work, we want to do it over the whole thing as a as a new layer. So what I'm going to do is first kind of get this back leg in shape. It's before I'm going to do all the, the finished cutting. But I had made the duplicate of this back leg so I can use it for the other leg because the reference was too, too blurry. But I can't just leave those legs like that because they look way too similar. So whenever you make a duplicate like that, you definitely want to warp it. I want to shift it into feeling more like it's the, the leg from another angle. So I'm going to use warp to change its silhouette and its angle for sure. It's pretty blurry, so I can use sharpen tool where I can, which is on top of the dodge and burn, and get a little bit of sharpness back to the edge of it, the claws. Then I can sink it down below some of the other layers. losing my place so that's that's about right and then I can erase away from ah, it's overlapping edges I need to take off the auto layer select it's getting me in trouble so now I'll just use my eraser I'm gonna start at hundred percent opacity soft edged And now I'm going to play with 
adjustments to change its color and its lighting because it's the back leg. So it's going to be darker in the midtones. I'm going to limit the highlights. And then I will maybe tilt it a little bit using transform. And then if I want to really get in there and change it, I'm going to internally composite this toe. Make a duplicate of it, Command J, and then move that here, and then play with its positioning. So it looks like there's a big toe there. And then with this toe underneath, I can actually cut it out. Let's use my lasso. It's pretty soft, so I can do my own choice of where to cut these details. But we want a creature head to toe. I can delete that away, and I can delete it away from the toe. And I can actually delete that away from some other layers too, like the belly. And the more we do this, the more we refine it, the more it will start to make sense. Then I can take that foot, and check it with its anatomy. With where I, I think the hip should go, I can merge it with its toe, maybe grow it a little bit, because the hips aren't that far apart. Maybe warp it, so it feels like a better overall silhouette. All right. Okay, now clone stamp. So how do we do this? I have the head locked. What I probably should do is get rid of these smart objects that made the body, and then group the body now all together by selecting all these body layers, clicking on the folder icon at the bottom of layers, and then locking that. Now I have a body group and a head group. Now I'm going to make a new layer on top of everything, and I'm going to label that layer. Clone Stamp's a pretty powerful, weird tool that can be really helpful. So I'm doing it only on its own layer, and this is rec how I recommend you use it, because otherwise it will destroy pixels as you use it. But if you do it on its own blank layer, you can always get back to your original. Because it's a dangerous tool, I'm going to mark it as red. And then how do you use it? So the clone stamp is this tool. It's under the brush tool. And don't open the, the drawer. You don't ever need the pattern stamp tool. We just want the, the old fashioned clone stamp tool. First thing is we use it a lot like we use a blending eraser. So we use a nice large pixel shape. We're gonna use a hardness of zero. So a large soft brush. And opacity, I'm going to start with 100% just so you can see how it's used, but mostly you'll use it with lower opacities. And then on these top settings, you want it on normal mode, you want the flow 100, but where it says sample, you can drop down. You can do current layer, current and below, or all layers. And I'm going to always say, let's see, let me help. All right, so before we use it, we'll take some deep breaths, and we're going to set it, instead of being just the current layer, because the current layer is empty, that's not going to do anything, we're going to set it to do current and below. So that means it's going to stamp, copy from any layers underneath. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my background gray, because I don't want to copy gray pixels into my creature if I can help it. 
So what does this tool do? It's a two-step tool. When you hold down Option, your cursor changes from your brush size to a bullseye. And when you do that, I'll put the bullseye on the tooth here. You click, and then it's going to carry that selection anywhere you want. So if I want to put a tooth right on the eye, then I just click there, and I can build it out from there and build to the tongue, the mouth, so on and so on. If I was in the layer that had the mouth, that would actually, or had the eye, that would destroy the eye, right? So that's why I use this on a separate layer that can be turned on and off, can be faded in and out. And obviously I don't want to put a mouth there, right? But what if I want to use some of these hedgehog bristles? I can hold option. Wait, let's delete. Because I'm sampling from any layer below, I can take some of these hedgehog bristles and I can put them at the tips of the ear if I want. This is pretty dramatic. This is at 100%. But you can see how you can use that kind of like the animator's clay to fill in gaps. Right? So what might make sense? Yeah, the base of the ear, I could use some texture. I want to get more of that mushroom stuff somewhere, like maybe at the crown of the head. So there's just lots and lots of potential for it. Yeah, let's try a little bit of this mushroom texture on the head. And then going into the bristles, right? I can do that. And then you can also use clone stamp at something other than 100% opacity. But you can also just erase away from it later. Let's put a little bit of that, that mushroom um, pattern into the ears. And then going into the, the bristles like heights adjusted at the base of the ear, right? And then I want to do that on the other side too. It's very easy, just like dodge and burn to overdo this. And once your selection travels with you, right? So you have to go back to where you want to clone from often to reestablish it. But because we're putting it on all one layer, then what you can do is go in with your eraser and blend it in more believably. We can even dodge and burn just the clone stamp. So in the shadow of the ear, that clone stamp should be a lot darker. And I'm not hurting any of my pixels underneath. They're all in their own separate layer that I can then transition in. So what if I want a little bit more of that kind of mushroom spottiness on the hedgehog. Well, clone stamp's a good way to try that. A whole lot safer than erasing from some of your source layers. So go to the clone stamp tool, hold down option. You don't need to select the layer because we've set it to select from all layers. Then I'm just going to bring some of these textures into the spikes. And then this is a little bit more wild, but if I turn off every layer, you can see just what the clone, what's on the clone stamp, and it's just that. So it's not that much. But what I can do is I can change the blending mode. So right now clone stamp is on normal, but what if I change it to lighten or to darken everything that's underneath or multiply? So you can have the clone stamp affect your work in a lot of different ways, and then you can always play with the opacity of the layer itself. 